Jessica Yates joins us. Can I call you the face, the presenting face of supercars? You sure can, because that's exactly what I am, isn't it? And it's not just the only sport you've ever done. I want to touch on that in a second. We've got the GC500 uh, this coming weekend. It's always a real highlight for supercars, isn't it? I love these street circuits, especially the inner city street circuits. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic up here. I've gotten up bright and early and I can see them putting the finishing touches on the second. There aren't too many places you can go in the world where you've got a racing circuit right alongside blue water and beach. It's just such an incredible landscape to have an event like this. And we really miss street circuits on the supercars calendar over the last two years. We obviously have, were able to get Townsville away, but we haven't been able to come to the Gold Coast. So to be back here and to have the action about to unfold is awesome. The energy is really high. Jess, how do the local people handle it? You see, we used to have, I can't, I don't know if you remember, but we used to have a street race, the Wellington Street Circuit, years and years ago when um, the Nissan sort of dominated in there. And it was just it just exhilarating. There's something about cars racing around the streets. And I don't mean boy races, I mean actual race cars. I mean, what is it? Is it is it a popular event amongst the locals? Oh, it's hugely popular. I think because we haven't had it here for the last couple of years, the interest and excitement around it this year has gone to another level. Um, but where it's set in surface paradise, there's actually quite a number of high-rise buildings um, in and around the precinct. So a lot of people actually stand on their balcony to watch the event, which is super cool. So the party goes well into the air, and that's not something that you see in very many places around the world. But I think the fact that there's a bit of a party atmosphere on the Gold Coast already. Um, adding this event just heightens all of that. And it's a, it's a real fan favourite, but also for the drivers. They love coming here. The weather's always fantastic. You know, to be able to get a glimpse of what the surf's doing as you're driving past yep. at 200 kilometres an hour is pretty cool. So uh, it's one of the best events we have on the Supercars calendar. Is that what your husband does? Does he go surfing while you do the race, does he? Because it actually combines <laughs> both perfectly, doesn't it? Well, he's actually a bit of a race fan. So when the races are on, you won't find him in the surf. He's in the pit lane checking it all out. But yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to come up here and um, for him to be able to indulge in that and also service his other passion, which is car racing. Right. Now, you see, here in New Zealand, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're very, we've got a big environmental um, lobby group, and that's why we can't have inner city street racing. Is there anything like that there? Are there activists that protest? We've had people gluing themselves to the motorways here in New Zealand over the last couple of days, you know, protesting about cars being driven and that. Do you get any of that kind of action happening where you are? No, not on the Gold Coast. I mean, look, we've got to be realistic about the fact that we're taking over um, a communal area. Normally, it's part of the um, community roads. So there is definitely some disruption to the traffic, but all the locals are fantastic. They love the event. It really um, brings so much in terms of tourism to the local economy. It puts the Gold Coast on the map in the most positive way. So we get a lot of local support here for the event, which is awesome. Jessica Yates, Fox Sport, Motorsport host with us doing the supercars. Now, you know, it's not just motorsport that you've done, and this is what I wanted to bring into people here. You've done the NRL, you've done the Big Bash, One Day Cricket, Surfing World Tour, amongst other things. Why did you suddenly veer off and in, 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 in supercars? Is it just a time thing or is this your favourite? <laughs> I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, aren't I? Um, look, I've always been part of Fox Sports' motorsport coverage. So back in the day when I was first coming through the ranks, I hosted our World Superbikes coverage, and then I moved on to MotoGP. And then um, Fox Sports were awarded the contract to um, host supercars. And so that was sort of a natural fit for me. But I'm a broadcaster. I love live sport. I love live TV. Um, so that's why... I, I really thrive on working across a number of different platforms and genres. I love working on the rugby league. We've got a fantastic um, stable of experts at Fox Sports. Um, but I love doing those in-depth interviews too. So if there's anything that ever comes up, doesn't matter what it is, I'll always put my hand up to be involved. But I definitely, I've, I'm, I'm definitely a rev head at heart. Right. I mean, there's just nothing like being at the track. Such a sensory experience, you know, the smell of the petrol, the vibration of the engines, you know, the sheer speed that these guys um, get to. There's, there's nothing as exciting in terms of live sport as car racing. So, 
yep, it's, it's definitely my favourite. I, I absolutely love it. But equally, you know, I love working on the rugby league and all the other stuff that I do for Fox Sports. It kicks me on my toes. Now, Larko's a good mate, and that's through Scott McLaughlin's dad. We've met him through, and, and he says that you won't find a harder working person. He said the preparation that you do, and this is what I love as a fellow broadcaster, that, you know, uh, I'm an absolute preparation freak, so that when the microphone goes on, you know you're so comfortable and confident in the fact that, hey, if anything goes wrong, you've got all your notes about you, you can go. How much do you actually do to prepare for an event like this? How many hours do you put in? Oh, look, every day. I'm putting in the work every day. And as you know, it's, you know, my job is to be the conduit between the audience and the action. And so I've got to try and be able to tell the story in the most exciting way for all of our audience. And so, you know, I've got to be in touch with the stars of the show, which are the drivers and the teams who work tirelessly to, you know, to put their best foot forward. Um, but equally, I'm, I'm so lucky to work with guys like Mark Larkham and Neil Crompton and Mark Scape, who are the experts at what they do. Um, they've been really good to me. We work really well as a team because we have a lot of fun, you know, you but we work really yeah. hard. And, you know, it's, it's about relationships and having connection and being able to, to talk to people. And I'm really there to make sure that we're putting supercars forward in the best way we can because it's such a cool show. Um, so, you know, whilst I, you know, I do a lot of prep, the access that we have makes my job really easy. It's um, brilliant. So it's brilliant. It, you know, I love working on it. Jess, it's better than every other sport that is televised. I think motorsport have got it exactly right. You know, we hear uh, the All Blacks obviously are our biggest noise, but you can't talk to a player days out before a game. You know, they can all do their Instagram. They just can't actually talk on a telephone. Yet you guys actually talk to guys that are sitting in the car. They've just come off, you know, racing at 300 Ks where they're just about to go. You know, the, the access is second to none. It's brilliant. Yeah, it is. And I think that's the difference. You know, our fans feel like they're right there in the cockpit with our drivers. And it's a testament to the series and to every single driver in it to make themselves available like that. Because I think there's an appetite for it. That's what fans want. They want to, you know, see it from a driver's point of view. They want to understand what happens right up until the last second. I mean, you think about state of origin football or to your point, you know, any massive global rugby union tournament to try and get the guys as they're running out onto the field is just impossible. We can actually talk to a driver while he's sitting in the car about to start the Bathurst yeah, 1000, yeah. Australia's biggest race. Yeah. Um, it's just the, the access and the insight is incredible. And I think that's why we've got such fabulous fans that just can't get enough of it. I hope this isn't an unfair question, um, but I don't know how to ask it without being clumsy about it. But do you feel a responsibility as a woman on the TV doing sport now? Because, you know, obviously that, you know, there's a big push, especially here in New Zealand, to kind of even that gender, that gender balance, get a lot more women actually front and screens talking about sport because half the audience as women for a start do you feel an extra responsibility or is it not something you think about to be perfectly honest with you it's not something I think about because I'm not there because I'm a woman I'm there because I'm the best person for the job and I've always been treated like that by my bosses and by my colleagues Um, and and I really want to prove to boys and girls out there that if you really love something and if you work hard enough you can do anything and I've been afforded that opportunity um, so from my point of view, I don't see it as a gender thing and I'll be really happy, you know, when the day comes where we're not discussing whether you're a man or a woman doing it, that you're just the best person for the job. As far as women on the grid goes, do you, do you want to see more women drivers? Is, is, is that a possibility? I know that the F1 boss said that he can't see it happening in the next two to five years. Again, though, surely it's, you know, it's about opportunity, isn't it? If you get the opportunity and you're damn good behind the wheel of a car, you know, hopefully the pathway is there. Well, car racing is one of the few sports globally where men and women can compete equally. You'll remember we had Simona Di Silvestro yes, in the yes. championship a couple of years ago. She was a gun. She was fantastic. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to grassroots and to your point about opportunity. So I think we need a real commitment and investment from sporting bodies, from governments to actually create those opportunities for young men and women to get in and have a go. It starts at karting in motorsport and I think you'll find that groundswell is really happening, particularly here in Australia. And I'm sure New Zealand is exactly the same. There's lots of girls karting at the moment. So I think for sure we will see women on the grid competing equally with men. Um, It might take a little bit of time, but I think the movement is there. And so if we can actually have a bit more investment at grassroots level and get more girls um, invested that way, I think we'll definitely see that wave of change. But there are some fabulous programs that are around. We've got girls on track 
here in Australia where we're encouraging girls from I think as young as five or seven right up until they're 16 to come to the track and see what it's all about even if it's not about driving it's about understanding what other opportunities are out there whether it's from an engineering standpoint whether it's from a PR and media standpoint uh, from a management standpoint it's a fabulous career and there are lots of opportunities whether you're a man or a woman I think it's all about you know what your dream is and what your passion is and about chasing it and working hard because like I said you know if you've got all those things anything's possible. Jesse Yates is with us Fox Sport Motor, uh, Motorsport host covering the supercars this weekend GC 500 second to last round you say you're a rev head what kind of car do you drive? <laughs> well at the moment I've got a Porsche Macan because I've got two children so and I live in Sydney, so it's perfect for me because it's pretty zippy around the city and it's just big enough that I can fit all the paraphernalia you need, like yep, prams yep, and yep. sporting equipment when you've got two young kids. So um, I'm actually really enjoying driving that at the moment. Hey, look, my, my, mine are 21 and 19 now, but I remember when we first had children, you'll love this, you, I'm, I'm sure you've had the same discussion with your husband too. There's no way in hell we were going to get a hatchback or a station wagon or any of those four-wheel drives or anything. As soon as we had the second one, the first thing we did was get one of those cars. That's just how it goes. <laughs> yeah, you need a people mover because it's not just children you're carting around, it's all the stuff that yeah. comes with them. But my husband, being a professional surfer, as you know, has got a Ford Ranger, so we've sort of got the best of both worlds he's got a big truck that we can fill full of surfboards and bikes and scooters and all that stuff so if we want to go on a road trip we can but then you know um, the McCann's been fantastic as a city car um, big enough to fit us all in so I think we're lucky we've got the best of both worlds at the moment a couple more questions we'll let you go and I thank you so much for your time what about racing what about getting behind the wheel of a race car have you done much of that no because I'm not a driver <laughs> I'm, I'm a broadcaster but I'll, I'll say that I've done. I've been lucky enough to do a lot of hot laps yeah. with the experts at lots of the tracks that we go to, and I'm always completely blown away when I get out of the passenger seat at, at the skill level these guys have. And it's really, I think, difficult to translate on, that on TV. I mean, the spatial awareness that they need to have when they're racing at such high speeds in all sorts of varying conditions is incredible. I mean, to be out on track as just one car and really hooking it's one thing but to be jostling with 25 26 other cars in the pouring rain after you've already done you know 100 kilometers or if you're at Bathurst you know 500 k's it's incredible I mean they're supreme athletes um, who are the very best in the world at what they do so you know I'm I'm always blown away when I hop out of a supercar at the sheer power and speed and and the skill level that these guys need to operate at. Do you have a favourite race track or a favourite driver? Um, look, I love Bathurst. It's just incredible. It's like nowhere else in the world. Um, so it's always such a highlight for me to go there and broadcast that event because it's the one, the one time of the year where everyone says to you, oh, who do you think is going to win? And honestly, up until the last five laps, you really don't know because anything can happen. I mean, we saw this year we had weather all week. Skippy always makes an appearance. Yes. Um, you know, things go wrong. You put co-drivers into the mix. It's just so unpredictable, and I think that's what makes it so exciting. I love coming to these street circuits. The Gold Coast is super cool, and, you know, we're going to see some serious action here this weekend. There's only two rounds to go in the championship, and your man, Shane Bankiesberg, has done a brilliant job mm. this year, um, and very likely that he'll wrap up his third title here this weekend. Um, but there are lots of guys that are trying to prove a point to finish the season. There's a lot on the line. The team's championship is still at play. Um, so I love coming to this event because, again, you just don't quite know how it's going to play out. Again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, wonderful talking to you. That pit walk you do with the, yourself and, and, with, and with Neil and with Mark, where you come down the pits and go through every, you know, next to everyone with a car, that is just brilliant. That is just brilliant television. Keep that up because that is just that's, it's 40 minutes where you can't take your eyes off the screen. It is so cool. Oh, well, we'll do one for you this weekend. No problem. <laughs> so to speak with you. And I hope everyone enjoys the racing this weekend.